This is the Halftime Show with Omar Adori on Pulse 95. Yes, we are back and we are live on Pulse 95 with your boy Omar Adori on the Halftime Show. Thank you very much for tuning in. A special happy, happy birthday to my boy Mustafa. Today is the day, my man. Happy born day. Hope you have a fantastic day. And enjoy that cake, my bro. Um, also, get well soon, Khalu Saleh. Uh, I love you and I hope you recover very, very soon. Okay, what's coming up on the show today? Now, how tough is addiction in sport? There have been many stories of athletes who have battled all sorts of addictions, things that have been able distracted them from performing at the highest level. But it's also down to those people that perform at a lower level. And that's something that we kind of sometimes overlook and it affects our mental health. So we'll be talking about that today. Day. The first female to coach a man's team in Europe. Big up to her as well. Helen Nekowocha, if I can say that properly. It's got a cool name. Um, and this is the start of a new wave of coaches in, uh, in the sport. And also, I'm happy to see her based on her quality rather than her gender. We're also taking all your questions as well on the show today. And also in local sports, the UAE draw with Iraq. I'm kind of in two minds about that. Obviously, with the Iraqi blood in me, that's something that I'm kind of happy with. But also with the UAE, I kind of want them to do well. But where is it going wrong and how can it be better? They've got some good people behind the scenes at the UEFA. We're discussing all that and more. Shout out to my Condado FC team as well here in the building on the Instagram live at Omar Duri. And we're going to take a quick break here. But you know what? As soon as we come back, we're going to tackle these topics head on. I'll see you in a bit, folks. Calling on young creators aged 16 years and above to put their brilliance in the hashtag grown video content production to work. All you have to do is film Sharjah and tag Pulse95 radio hashtag Sharjah above. So all I want you to do, if you want to win some money, you can win up to 10,000 dirhams worth of prizes cash. Go get up there, get the drone up there, show us Sharjah. And you know what? You might just win 10,000 dirhams of prizes. Get aerial with your drone and film beautiful Sharjah. Pulse95 wants you filmmakers to enter from Sharjah above with love. With the two best 60 second videos winning 10,000 dirhams each, listen out more for details across the shows on Pulse95 Radio. This is the Halftime Show with Omar Adori on Pulse95. And we are live and we are back in the heart of Sharjah on Pulse95 Radio with your boy Omar Adouri. Shout out to everyone who is tuned in and happy birthday to Mustafa again. We're going to keep doing that every segment, Mustafa. Don't worry, it won't be too late for that. Shout out to my Condado FC crew as well who are in the building. All right, so what we've noticed now in the pattern when it comes down to coaches and refereeing and officials is we're starting to see a lot more females enter the sport in men and women's football. What I like about this story here is the first female to coach a men's top team in Europe, Helen Nikowocha, is actually doing big things right now. And she is, you know, she's she's representing, man. And I like this. I, it makes me smile because I've seen some really good coaches out there, uh, female. And when gender doesn't come into it and qualities stands out, it's, it's amazing. Um, Helen Nakawocha was fired by drive and determination when she sold her home and decided to live on a houseboat to fund her dream of becoming a professional football coach. Probably never in her wildest dreams should, should she imagine that she would become the first female coach of a top flight men's team in Europe. And she's doing it big right now. She's doing it in the Faroe Islands. There's a club in the Faroe Islands called, let me try and get this right, Tavoriar Bolt Felag. <laughs> <laughs> Try and say that 10 times on a night out. Um, so so that's that's uh, a team she's representing. But as they approached the end of a poor season, which brought them only three points, they turned to Nekowocha. And she's been working at, um, at the club as a youth coach to guide them through the final six games. I really like this. Not only because she's London-born, but also it's like, you know, when people take a chance, man, you never know. You gotta Sometimes you earn your own luck and... And when you put the graft in, you put the work in, you're going to get the opportunity. And when opportunity meets, you know, opp- when opportunity meets success, it's just one way, you know, it just gets there. Um, when you start youth club level as well, I kind of, I love the story of people that, you know, come up from from things like this. And I, I was watching, 
I was reading this article and, and studying uh, what she's done and she's done a lot of things and whether you have to go out of your comfort zone and go live in a different country in a city that you probably don't even speak the language that that puts you on the map and now we're talking about how the BBC we're talking about how there's so many things there that it's 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 refreshing to hear and there's also some female coaches that I've worked with that I've been very very impressed with you know and there's some of them are still playing at the moment shout out to Lynn Lauren, Lisa, uh, all good, good footballers, but also, you know, try and take it that one step further by actually coaching. When you're actually coaching, your your mind and, and your eyes open up to a whole different game, even if you're uh, if you're very experienced as a player. And that's in most sports as well, not just football. You get to really see, you know, the levels of uh, analyzing games, reacting versus so action versus reaction and how you set up and how you plan and how you do all the things that could possibly work in your favor as as a team so shout out to everyone who's there what's up coach nick hashim uh mustafa obviously lynn angel ibrahim masoud of course who's asked a question what uh what is it that you miss and wish you could have the m- moment again and the best moment in your journey i think you're talking about radio uh Honestly, just being here and, and getting to meet people and interview people and, and, and understand their background, their journeys, their stories, I think that's been very, very good for me. You know, regardless of being a coach or, or being in the game, it doesn't matter. You get to you get to um, pick from different flavors and see, you know, certain people have come on here, even the, the ones who weren't known before coming on radio, you know, your local heroes, your local superheroes, people who have done things for, you know, for a lifetime and haven't really got the recognition that they really deserve bringing them on on the show has been refreshing because you get to see the, the reality of what they live and how they live and, and how they inspire people maybe not on a social media front maybe not necessarily on you know in the public but but they do a lot behind the scenes I know someone um, who's incredible at what he does and uh, and has been there for me a lot when I've needed it Dr. Sean Penny oh my god what a guy and uh, just you know, being selfless and, and, and being so humble about his work, even though he's the best at what he does, seeing people like him and him helping me through my journey, I haven't got him on the show yet, but I'm going to try and send him this message or even check if he's watching one day uh, because he's not really on social media that much. So Dr. Sean Penny is like knowledge personified, not just in terms of the way he conducts himself with the the, the the knowledge that he has, but also the way he delivers it. And he's so... He's such a good pro and a lovely guy. So shout out to Dr. Sean Penny if he ever sees this. Uh, okay, coming up next, we're talking about how tough is addiction in sport and do we have enough as a society to ensure voices are heard? Think about mental health in this. We'll be right back after the break. Enjoy this, folks, and I'll see you right after this. This is the Halftime Show with Omar Adori on Pulse95. Calling on creatives aged 16 years and above to put their brilliance in hashtag drone video content. Over 30,000 in cash prizes to be won, two video categories to be included, cinematic drone and FPV drone. Participants must post their videos not exceeding 60 seconds on Instagram, but please don't forget to tag at Pulse95 Radio and hashtag Sharjah above really important you get that right Sharjah above you can win up to 10,000 dirhams worth of prizes in cash and not only that give us your best 60 second videos winning 10,000 dirhams each listen out for more details on Pulse95 and it's to do with Omnis Media get on that folks go get it now get some money let's go let's go this is the Halftime Show with Omar Adori on Pulse95. We are back. We are live on Pulse95 with your boy Omar Adouri in the heart of Sharjah. Hope you're having a blessed day. Got to give a quick shout out to my uncle Khalil Saleh. Get well soon. I love you and I hope you recover very, very soon. Happy birthday to Mustafa again. Theme of the day is uh, is, is it will be we're, we're celebrating today. We're celebrating uh, Mustafa's birthday. Um, big big things. Okay, right. So the question of the day is: How tough is addiction when it comes to sport? Now, we've seen a lot of athletes tailor off and and struggle offline, let's say, or out of the scene with addiction to many things, whether it's substances, whether it's 
mental health, uh, so many factors. I think being on top of the world and then also being brought down to ground level, social media plays a big role in that. And it's really important we address that as a society to ensure that voices are being heard. Now, there can be serious implications with these things. And there could be a lot of times where people could be just having a bad day. and We don't realize how our words affect them. So I was looking at this and I was looking at all the different athletes out there. And also, not just at the highest level, but also at the low level. We get athletes from all around the world that struggle with, you know, addiction. And, you know, these things really take their toll. And sometimes people don't even know they're in it unless they have help. Now, obviously, at the, the major clubs all around sports, you have, you know, people that are there to, to specialize and listen and do these things. But the ones at the lower clubs sometimes, for example, you know, when I'm at my, when I'm coaching, I don't have, I'm not blessed with a team of three or four people to be able to help my players. But sometimes these things really affect the mental health and really affect that side of the game. And it being mental health, mental health month as well, I thought it was very important to kind of discuss this with you guys and, and be able to, to share this with you because anyone whether it's at work whether it's in sport could be going through a lot of stuff and we wouldn't really know it and i think if you're watching for example the show which has been a huge hit ted lasso um at the moment if you're watching that show and you see the psychology behind a lot of the characters different backgrounds different roles different positions they all kind of have their own struggles but internally we don't really know what people are going through and that's why it's really important to be able to sometimes do more listening than talking sometimes be just weary of what you say words can really really affect people and and it being mental health month you know on, on the show when I mean, we were always discussing it so every day is like mental health day and mental health month but we like to try and bring that to the surface because a lot of people out there are struggling and and they're really going through a tough time and that could be with family could be with friends could be with all sorts of people but just so that you know there are good people out there that listen there are good people out there that you know are willing to help but you kind of have to come to the first acceptance of you know addressing a situation and trying to progress in that situation and doing things like sports and health and fitness and joining a gym or even just joining a group of, of, of individuals, like-minded individuals who have their own challenges, holding you accountable as well as holding themselves accountable and not people that are not pointing fingers. I think it's really key to be able to discuss that. And right now we're you know in a society where a lot of people are going through th- some things. Social media has a, you know, a huge part in that, what people share, what people post. So kind of be mindful of that as well. There are massive, massive things happening out there. Some people don't even go on social media altogether. I mean, I have a good friend of mine who who doesn't really um, use social media, but when he tells people that he's not on social media, they kind of look at him and go, really? What's wrong with you? But there's nothing actually wrong with him. He just doesn't want to interact on that field or that front. So I think all these factors, we really have to be mindful of it. And I thought I would bring this up because I know that there's been a lot of athletes that have come out of the sport and then later on discussed, you know, the challenge and the struggles they had. And we're here to be able to use this platform to discuss things. And anyone who is watching now or listening to Pulse95 Radio, you know, if you need that help or if you need to kind of get something off your chest, you know, do seek help. Do send us a message. Um, I posted something the other day which got a, a good reaction because it was more like sometimes people are not going to clap for you. You're going to have to clap for yourself and appreciate and value you know the progress that you're making and and it was amazing how many people shared it and people got involved and how many people actually were acknowledging that it's it's great so anyway on that mental health month i just wanted to kind of share that with you guys and also be very mindful that a lot of people are going through their own challenges and struggles and here on the halftime show you know we promote mental health and we promote you know being able to speak to someone so best of luck out there we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back after the break enjoy this folks and i'll see you soon this is the halftime show with omar adori on pulse 95 yes we are back and we are live on pulse 95 radio with your boy omar adori on the halftime show thank you very much for tuning in if you did miss the show don't worry catch all of our episodes on apple spotify soundcloud if you like a podcast or even if you prefer a visual head over to the youtube channel pulse 95 radio and we we are there we've got some plenty we got some plenty we got plenty of great guests on there covering some really important topics like mental health gut health and how important performance is uh, on the brain and the body okay right so on the show today we spoke about the first female coach in a men's team in europe and how she's doing big things over there is this a new wave of coaches we were asking and also how tough is addiction when it comes down to sports 
and how can we do better in helping people out about it now we're also talking about the uae in local sports the uae faced iraq now i'm a bit I'm a, this is a bit of a tricky one for me because obviously i reside in the uae and have been here for wow over a decade so it's been a while and but at the same time you know iraq's where my father's from so therefore i you know i'm always going to be you know rooting for iraq but just to sit on the fence i will say it was a draw between these two and i'm very very glad that you know we got a chance to to witness um iraq versus the uae yesterday now um you know there's been a lot of skeptical uh skepticism out there when it comes down to international sports but saying that uh Ali Mabhout scored a stoppage time goal as the UAE fought hard to pull back a draw against Iraq in a World Cup qualifier in Dubai on Tuesday um the problem with this whole situation is it kind of puts a lot of things in doubt because of the standings and because of where people are right now we kind of have to look at Iran who are way ahead in 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 qualifying and and that puts Iraq and the UAE you know in danger of missing out on the World Cup and I I'm kind of gutted about that because I'd love to see them both in there, you know. Um, UAE and Iraq are sitting seven points behind the group leaders Iran and five adrift of second place Korea Republic. We all know how Korea and Iran are solid, solid outfits and so therefore it's, it's, it's hard to kind of trickle because of these things. But it has been the fourth of 10 match days in the final round but the nature of the group standings made it a game of significant importance for both sides who both really needed to win. But it was the host who enjoyed the brightest start and then in the end rescued, rescued a point. When I look at all this, especially having been here for such a long time, I kind of wonder how important it is for the UAE to be able to explore all the options. Now, obviously, with COVID affecting a lot of people in terms of travel, we weren't allowed to see camps abroad, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But one thing I will say is, and I was asking this question to a friend of mine the other day, how many of the UAE national team players play abroad? And how many of those play in Europe? Now, you might ask, why is that relevant? The reason why it's relevant is because by them learning their trade abroad, it does help the national team. And by bringing in international coaches who are from abroad, yes, they're going to bring their ideas. But with the players being familiar with the league's abroad, that gives them an even closer chance of adapting to all the different opposition that we face in the World Cup or we face in the in the Asian Cup or the African Cup or wherever it is and that's why I kind of look at you know by Marwick's uh, style and, and what he's bringing by the way his he's, football knowledge is, is, is excellent but I also look at someone like Dick Advocat who's the coach of Iraq and the way he's done things but when we see players like Mohamed Salah who who you know did his thing in Basel and then got scouted and then went to England then went to Italy then came back to England the knowledge that players get from experience in every sport is so vital for the national team because then all of a sudden you bring that to your arsenal like the way i mentioned arsenal you bring that to your arsenal and you you, you end up learning a lot more and we've we had the two uh, international women's tunisian uh, tunisia players here the other day and they were talking about how traveling has helped them so there are all these factors that are key and very very important to development and and that's where i think the uae would be even more higher on the on the on the standings for the world cup qualifiers if their players were abroad now some may also question the same thing with saudi arabia for example who the reason why there's a lot of saudi arabian players based in saudi and not abroad is because they get paid quite well so how are they going to improve if they're quite comfortable financially and why would they want to go and get a pay cut in a team maybe is not guaranteeing them football in a different country out of their comfort zone. You see, there's a catch-22 about that. But let me know what you think. 4215 at the Salat or do or start up into my DMs at Omar Duri. We're going to play some Jones and Econ Boy. Grateful. Happy birthday, Mustafa. <laughs> Again. And we'll be right back with our final segment to answer your questions for the day. This is the Halftime Show with Omar Adouri on Pulse95. Yes, we are back and we are live on Pulse95 Radio. Shout out to everyone who is tuned in and thank you very much for connecting. I hope you've enjoyed the show today as much as I have. And what's up, Aisha? And uh, a roundup of the sports, actually. A lot of people saw, people were, were dropping a lot of messages about the Newcastle takeover. And I think that's something that with with the Saudi Arabian um, royalty taking over Newcastle everyone's kind of like discussing that and saying what are they going to do who are they going to buy how's that going to go what do you think I think um, you know so many uh, 
things have been assumed in terms of what's going on. But I don't think it will be instant, by the way. I think they'll be given time. And not only that, I think what they will do is start to work on the things internally. So we we'll talk about the academy, the training facilities, you know, because to, to bring these type of superstars, you kind of have to have a really good base. And Newcastle has incredible fans and they will have, you know, um, the right structure in place for those people but I don't think there'll be sudden changes now I feel sorry for Steve Bruce as well I mean it's his 999th game and he's got his 1000th game this weekend and everyone's talking about him getting sacked it's, it's never nice to see but I think the smart thing from Newcastle if they actually now bring in a technical director with a 2-5 to five year plan to build that structure I think that will be fantastic I think that way regardless of if there's change of manager the idea to bring in and integrate the right coaches, the right manager, uh, the right players, transfer-wise, will be good. And also, maybe even develop their youth system so they can actually start to field in all these players. I think that's going to be very, very key. And there's been all this talk about, you know, Haaland and Mbappe and all these superstars coming. I don't think that's going to happen yet. But I do think bringing in a technical director of Monchi, for example, at Sevilla, who, who, who was at Roma before and, and brought in some fantastic players and discovered some fantastic players. I think people like him or even Mark Overmars at Ajax, who's seen the system, Van der Sar, seen the system. And then there's, in terms of coaches, they're talking about the younger coach to help kind of build up Newcastle, like your Steven Gerrards or your Frank Lampards, or even going for someone who's going to be with you through thick and thin and had experience like Brendan Rodgers. That could be something. But I can't see Antonio Conte coming and I can't see Zidane coming. Not yet anyway, but maybe in the future. So that's where I kind of lie on that Newcastle message. A lot of people said, who are they going to buy? You know, what kind of coaches? In terms of buying, I think they'd have to be smart with how they buy. And right now, they need proven Premier League players who don't need time to adapt because Newcastle are facing a relegation battle. So having players that have experienced the Premier League who are going to work hard is the key. So you look at, you know... Players like uh, Basuma, Brighton, James Ward, Prowse, you know, uh, Talkovsky, I think at Burnley is free in six months. You know, Henderson at Manchester United as a goalkeeper. Kasper Schmeichel with the experience that he has as a goalkeeper. There's all these players, you know, that if you look at, when it was the Manchester City model, they have to learn from that. So they went for someone like Rubinho. I've heard of people saying, bring in Coutinho from Barcelona. And, and make that the marquee signing. But right now, they need someone who's ready-made, who's fit, match fit, and willing to fight, not just willing to put on a couple of good performances. They need to fight now, and they need to build up this momentum to what it's going to be a very, very exciting project. And I did hear that the Premier League clubs did get together to try and, you know, dispute this and, and question how this has happened. Kind of ironic when the big six, apparently, were vouching for a Super League. Hey, listen... Right now, it's entertainment, and you've got to think of how entertaining Newcastle are going to be. Bring back the Kevin Keegan days. Maybe even put Alan Shearer as, uh, as someone high up in the club to help the club move in the right direction. Because I remember he, he, he was an absolute legend in the sport and also, you know, a character that people will listen to. So that's just my two cents on it. Shout out to Super Mario as well. He's doing big things for us on the YouTube. Remember, you can uh, catch us every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, 3 to 4 UAE time or head over to our YouTube channel, Pulse95 Radio and all of our shows get put up on there thanks to Super Mario, the man himself. I uh, will be seeing you guys on Saturday, same time, same place, on the only place to be at 3, the Halftime Show on Pulse95. If you liked this episode of the Halftime Show, drop a like and subscribe. 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories. Bye-bye.